your soul with all your mind and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he is worthy to be praised. Good morning and thank you for joining us here at New Dimensions Fellowship Ministries. I am Elder Steve Colvin and this is my wife, Sonia. Good morning. Last week we began the series, Your Body is a Temple, with the scripture reading coming from 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 through 20 where we had a brief discussion on the spirit and how the spirit, soul, mind, and body all are independent and connected in nature. Mm -hmm. Today we'll be continuing the series with part two, discussing the mind with our guest, Deacon Sean Weaver. Good morning. Good morning. So let me start by saying, the mind is the mental aspect of our being. It is the thought mechanism of the body. It influences our physical actions and emotional behaviors. Mm -hmm. Think about this. When a child is born, they have yet to experience the influences of the world. However, as time passes, the state of mind processes env environmental behaviors and loses connections with intuition. Have you ever heard the phrase, you are a product of your environment? You see, the mind starts conforming to this world via various factors like knowledge, social demands, familiar expectations, material pressures, and media influences. It creates a memory bank that expands with time and influences our future actions. This is what got man in trouble in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden, when Adam and Eve ate from the tree that God told them not to eat from, what happened? It exposed their mind to something that they had not experienced before. Okay. Before that, they were spiritual and pure. After, their minds had a totally different perspective because their eyes were open to the knowledge of good and evil. With that being said, maybe we can gain a better understanding of what Apostle Paul was saying in Romans 12 and 2, where he said, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. So the mind plays a critical role when it comes to our temple. So let's get ready to have an informative discussion on the mind. So yes, I have been waiting on this because after being in the house for the last few months, I finally understand what the ghetto boys was talking about when they said my mind is playing tricks on me. I mean, when you're home and you're by yourself, your mind just starts taking you all kind of different places and you can get a little stir crazy. So Deacon Sean, I am excited to hear what you have to say today mm -hmm. when we're talking about the mind. And if you could please just give us a little bit of your background and tell us what you currently do. Okay, as earlier stated, I am Deacon Sean Weaver. I am a U.S. Navy veteran of 25 years in healthcare. Uh, the first 25 years of my career was in the ophthalmology optometry field. Uh, there was a time that I wanted to become an eye doctor, but I found that it wasn't really my passion. So while I was doing my eye exams, I spent more time talking to patients about their social issues and kind of talking about more personal topics. And I kind of found out that I kind of liked that more than doing eyes. I was always fascinated with mental health and how the mind works. So I changed my major and then I went back to school and pursued my degree in mental health. 
Okay. I graduated from the University of Southern California with my master's degree in social work with an emphasis on mental health. I am currently working with a local organization with the homeless team. Mental health is a very important topic to me because I am an individual that has been diagnosed with a mental health disorder, which I will discuss shortly. Okay. Well, I have a question. We're talking about the mind. Is the mind and the brain the same thing? No, that's a very good question. Uh, most people do think that the mind and the brain are often mistaken for one and the same, but okay. the brain is just the physical place where the mind resides. Mm -hmm. So they're not the same, but they are all in one piece, but they're their own, each individual entity. The brain is the natural organ and the mind is not. Okay. Okay. So That's good. Uh, the brain is the physical place where the mind resides. The mind is responsible for cognitive functions, uh, such as imagination, okay. perception, thinking, judgment, language, and memory, as well as non-cognitive functions, such as emotions, eating, and breathing. Okay. Um, it is safe to say that the mind is a vital part of the body a.k.a. the temple. If your mind is compromised, it will cause your body to perform under its full uh, performance level. Okay. The mind is still functional when the body is paralyzed, but a paralyzed mind will definitely shut down with the body. Okay. So you're saying that the mind can function without the body, but the body can't function without the mind. Right. Can you give us an example of that? So an example of that is if you have an individual that has been in a car accident and they're paralyzed from the neck down, right. they are still able to possibly write a book, okay. uh, become a public speaker, without their parent, they're still able to parent their offspring when the mind shuts down, that also shuts the body down, that resembles more like a coma. You can still possibly hear, but your mind is working in a very okay. minimal state and you have no controlled movements. Okay. Wow. Okay. So now I have another question. Is there a difference between mental health and mental illness? Yes, that's another good okay. question. Uh, the difference between mental health and mental illness, according to the, well, the World Health Organization, the WHO, mm -hmm. mental health is a state of mental well-being in which the individual relies on his or her own abilities and can cope normally with stress life, uh, can work productively, okay. and, can, and, and be fruitful, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Okay. Mental illness or health conditions involve changes in emotions, mm -hmm. thinking, behavior, or a combination of both. But mental illness is associated with stress, uh, problems functioning, social, family, or mental, or mental activities, but okay. mental illness is very common. Okay. Wow. And can you give us some examples of the most recognized mental illnesses? Sure. Let's take a few moments to discuss some of the more common mental illnesses. Okay. Um, I've, I've come up with the top five, in my opinion, that I've seen in my field. So we have depression, anxiety, bipolar affective disorder, mm -hmm. schizophrenia, and PTSD, PTSD, which is also known as post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay. So let's start with depression. Okay. Depression normally affects women, often in men. Mm -hmm. We're not really sure why, but that is often the case. Whenever we see individuals with depression, there is a larger population of women that has it. Okay and it's characterized by uh, loss of interest and pleasure, general sadness, uh, eating pattern changes, exhaustion, mm. and lack of concentration. Uh, genetics, life events, medical problems, and medications can bring on the illness. Okay. In its most severe state, depression can also lead to suicidal thoughts and ideations. Wow. Mm. So the next one we'll go over is anxiety. Now, it is not uncommon for a person experiencing depression to also have anxiety and vice versa. This disorder affects 40 million individuals. Mm -hmm. It is highly treatable, but only 37% will seek treatment. Okay. Wow. So, and the treatment itself is psychotherapy, medications play an important part in the role, helping control and manage the symptoms of anxiety. A bipolar affective disorder is the next one. And it has two different types of episodes. The first one is called like a manic episode. That's when you're kind of hyperactive. Mm -hmm. And that leads to elevated or irritable moods, super hyperactivity, inflated self-esteem, and a lack of desire to sleep. Okay. Now, on the flip side, the depressive episodes are more characterized by feelings, extreme sadness, hopelessness, little energy, and trouble sleeping. Okay. The great thing about the bipolar affective disorder that it is 
there is no known cause for it. So they haven't been able to link it to genetics or anything. Oh, wow. It's just I something that appears. That. It can be treated, though, through medication and psychosocial support. Okay. Uh, schizophrenia is another popular one. Uh, this is the one that, you know, most people are probably mm -hmm. familiar with within movies. Right. This is exactly. Yeah, this one is characterized by distortions of thinking, perceptions, emotions, sense of self, and behavior. Mm -hmm. um, illnesses can experience hallucinations, delusions, starting in the late adolescence or early adulthood, making it difficult for people to work, study, or interact socially. Okay. Many who experience this mental illness do not have access to adequate mental health and social support. Wow. So sometimes leading to housing insecurity, which could help treat this disorder. So another thing with schizophrenia and most uh, mental health mm -hmm. uh, disorders, there is not a lot of proper treatment for it. So a lot of the people that are in our prison system, they're not necessarily criminals. They just may have some type of mental disorder that they're not being get. treated okay. for. So if you think about it, if you go to the ER mm -hmm. and they put you in what's called a mental health examination phase, they may admit you to one of the local um, facilities, facilities yeah, and they may keep you there maybe seven days, wow. give you enough medicine to last you maybe three days. So once you run out of those medicines, guess then what? You're just the done. cycle starts all over again. Wow. So we do have individuals, when I worked at the crisis center mm -hmm. here at the Covenant Hospital, there are individuals that know the system, so they know they can just How go back go, because that's, that's their the treatment medicine. thing. And then yeah, so that just keeps keep them on the street in the winter time. They are, they are aware that it's cold outside. Wow. They are aware of their symptoms and they do what wow. they gotta do. Uh, and the last one I like to touch on is post traumatic stress disorder. Now this one is triggered by a terrifying event, mm -hmm. whether you have, or you are a part of it or you witness it. The the symptoms include flashbacks, nightmares, mm -hmm. severe anxiety, as well as untroubled thoughts about the event. Sometimes the symptoms may not appear for years after the event. Oh, wow. Now, I mentioned earlier that I would discuss mm -hmm. my mental health disorder. Mine happens to be PTSD, okay. and it has been a life-changing event for me, believe it or not. I believe it's made me stronger overall. Okay. It may have dented my armor, but it, my armor is still intact. Uh, the way I coped with this disease, I educated myself so I could understand of the person that I had become. It is impossible to go through a traumatic event and remain the same person. Uh, the Persian Gulf was my event, and any person that had been in the field of, in the, on the uh, war battlefield, you cannot come back the same person as right. you were. It's just impossible. Right. You see too much, you go through it, too many emotional right. changes. I can believe that. You just have to learn to deal with it. I can also cope with conversations, uh, meditation and prayer, and listening to music. Uh, for me, medication did not work for me, okay. so I'm not a medication person. So I knew I had to come up with a different type of coping mechanism and not be dependent on drugs. So that may not work for anyone else out there, but that works for me. Okay. Don't be afraid to seek help. Uh, mm -hmm. It will produce the best outcome. The worst thing you could do is sit and not do anything about it. Exactly. I found that most people that deal with addictions and mental issues have a problem saying these three words, I need help. In their minds, they know something's not right, but because of shame, guilt, the feeling of being failure or being weak-minded, along with our, the way our society has a tendency to tear down, mm -hmm. make fun of, or view them as less than normal, they don't seek the help they need. Mm -hmm. They find themselves silently crying out for it. And because of this expression is inwardly and not outwardly, the people on the outside don't see what's going on on the inside until it's too late. Right. So we've been talking about a lot of the issues, and I know in my mind, I tend to think that this is an adult thing. How does age play a factor in this? Well, age plays an important factor. So what we have here is the DSM-5. It's a, a diagnostic manual that we're using in a mental health field. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the fifth version of it, I believe, and the latest version happened in 2012. And each diagnosis has uh, criteria. So the children's criteria is anyone that's under 18. Okay. So there are a list of diagnoses that only apply to children because of their age, such as conduct disorder, 
uh, defiant disorder, things of those natures. And once they become an adult, mm -hmm. those diagnoses will carry over to an adult type diagnosis and that will probably follow them, that diagnosis will follow them the rest of their lives. Because most of these uh, mental health conditions, they last based upon the, the onset and how long of the duration. Okay. If it's happening for years, you probably have that same diagnosis for a lifetime. Okay. So for parents, when you're, um, you know, thinking about your children, there are some red flags you want to be mindful of. Okay. Uh, one of those is excessive sleeping uh, beyond the usual teen fatigue, mm -hmm. which could indicate depression or substance abuse. Uh, difficulty in sleeping, in, in, such as insomnia and other sleep disorders. Okay. Another one is loss of self-esteem. If you have a child that's usually up and really have really high self-esteem, if you notice a big drop off in that, that could be mm -hmm. a sign okay. that something's going on. Abandonment of loss of interest in favorite pastimes. So if you know if your child was an avid piano player and all of and a sudden they, they don't done. want to touch it, <laughs> it could be something right. going on. Okay. Um, unexpected dramatic decline in academic performance. If they are an A student and they start bringing home C's and D's and failing classes, that's something also going something, on. something's going on. <laughs> Weight loss, loss of appetite, uh, will indicate an eating disorder. Okay. Uh, personality shifts such as aggression, excessive anger, mm -hmm. um, outbursts in anger drugs, sexual problems, anything that is out of the normal for your Those are those you red are. flags that we need to look right. for. Yep, and they will also tend to do self-mutilation, which is uh, like cutting right. or just trying to harm themselves in any way. That's also a sign that a mental health disorder is on the horizon. Okay. And with the older teens, you have to be mindful of like the prescription drug use. They will sneak yes. in and yes. They may not be able to buy a prescription drug, but they will definitely slip in and take their parents. Right. So, and also be mindful of over-the-counter drugs. So things like NyQuil and any of that yeah. stuff is also a red flag if you notice that it, you have that in the house and, and it's coming you can't up keep missing. it on the cabinets. <laughs> right. right. So that's just some of the things that, you know, and there's, like I said, again, there's tons of things in this mm -hmm. book that would be impossible to actually go over all of them. Okay. In one session. Right. So this is what we use at work. This is what the doctors use to provide the diagnoses for these mental health conditions. So okay. it's the way it stands. That's that great. That's awesome. So you've given us some information and some red flags to look for. Do you have some resource information that we're able to put out there in case someone does need some help? Right. So one of the biggest resources that is used most of the time is for suicide. Okay. So some of the suicide warnings are people that are talking or wanting to die or kill themselves. They talk about it openly. Um, talking about it free, uh, talking of feeling hopeless and having no purpose. Okay. Uh, talking about being a burden to others, acting anxious, agitated, or reckless. Uh, some people that are having suicidal ideations, they will actually have a plan and they can then visualize how it would be carried out. That's one of the wow. more severe cases, and they, they haven't acted on it, but they are in a stage where they are ready to. They just haven't had the opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones you really want to watch. So anybody out there that ever finds themselves in this type of position, here's a few resources that we have up on the screen. Uh, one of them is the National Suicide Prevention Line. Mm -hmm. Um, it reads, if you or someone else you know is in a crisis, call the lifeline, and that number is 1-800-827-8255. You can either text signs to the number 741741, and it's an anonymous free crisis counseling. Oh, awesome. And the other one is the Substance Abuse Mental Health Service Administration. Mm -hmm. Their number is 1-800-662-HELP, which is 4357. And also threw in the Veterans Crisis Line, because I'm not sure if we have any veterans out there, but they have their own crisis Separate line. Separate line, okay. Yep. And it is 1-800-273-8255. And if all else fails, you can always dial 911. And they'll and direct, they will you. direct you to the right person. Right. Well, thank you. Deacon Sean, I just want to thank you for all the information you gave today. Just coming in and helping to get us all the way together when it comes to our minds. I think a lot of times um, we are dealing with issues and they might not be severe to the point that we may need to um, seek some of the resources that you mentioned, but it may be severe enough 
or at least questioning to where we may need to talk to somebody. So I thank you. And all of the resource information that he did give, we will make sure that we will have that posted on our Facebook page. So if there is a need for it, you will have access to that information. Wow, yeah, that was good. I really enjoyed this segment of yes. the mind. Now we can see how important it is to have our minds sound and fit. So let's make sure we are taking care of our mental health. Again, we thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank and we you. also thank you for your generous giving and support of our ministry. We look forward to, to you joining us next week as we continue with part three of Your Body is a Temple, where we will be discussing and focusing on the body. Amen. We pray that you have a great week and may God bless you. Goodbye. Bless you. Goodbye. With all my heart